Drawing any type of portrait can be quite difficult, but I'm going to share exactly how I choose my colours and layer them to create realistic looking skin tones using pastels. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I create drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow so that you can create realistic and professional artwork even if you're just starting out. You can also apply most of these ideas and techniques to coloured pencil or any other type of medium that you're working with. For all of my pastel pieces, I like working on Claire Fontaine pastel mat, and I usually use pan pastels as a base with pastel pencils on top. I'll leave the suppliers I used in the description below, as well as a tutorial showing you how to use pan pastels, with a bit more information about them if you're unsure of what they are. When it comes to my initial outline on portraits, I tend to add a lot more lines than on other types of subjects, Portraits are actually one of the harder subjects for me to draw in comparison to animals or landscapes, for example. So I like to add outlines where the values and colours change just to help me out a little bit more. Some people find it more confusing to add this many lines in the initial outline, so it's totally up to you how much you want to include. Sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming and you're not sure where to start on a piece like this. The way that I like to start my base layer is by choosing a colour in my reference photo that looks really obvious to me, which in this case were the highlights, and they're actually more of a pink colour in this reference photo. In this base layer, I tend to oversaturate my colours so that the pink is quite bright, but the colours will dull down a little bit as the layers go on. You can actually see a picture of the finished portrait in the top of the screen there, so you can see what my base layer will look like in comparison to the finished drawing. So I like to add that colour where I first saw it, which was on the cheek, and then while I've got that colour in my hand, I'm going to add it anywhere else that I can see it on my reference photo before choosing the next most obvious colour. With the pan pastels that I'm using for this base layer, I'm actually picking up a few different colours from different pans onto my tool, and then I'm applying it to my surface. But you can actually blend your colours before adding them to your drawing if you're unsure about colour mixing. You can put a piece of printer paper to the side and then grab the colours you think you need from your pans, and then mix them on the paper just like paint, and then you can go straight into your artwork from there. It does take a bit longer to do it this way and mix your colours separately, because you can only mix a small amount at a time, but if you want a more accurate idea of what your colour is going to look like before you add it to your drawing, this may help you a bit. No matter what type of skin tone you're working on, it's really important to understand that there isn't a perfect colour. If you take a photo of someone and then you put them in some different lighting and take another photo, you're going to have a completely different colour palette for each reference photo. In these examples, I've added a filter to the same reference photo to change the colours slightly. All of the photos look realistic, but the colours are different. This means that your colour choice isn't really that important when it comes to making something look realistic. It's actually your values that are more important. So how dark or light your colour is is more important than the actual colour itself. On top of that, skin also reflects other colours around it. So depending on the background, you may see a lot of different colours reflected in the skin that wouldn't be an obvious choice for that certain skin tone. In this example, you can see a lot of purple on the side of her face, which looks really obvious without the background, but in the final drawing, you can see it looks very natural once the background is done. In this example of a young boy, you can see that underneath the chin, I've added quite a bit of orange because it's reflected off of his shirt. And in this portrait of an older lady, it shows that there are quite a lot of reds, oranges, and purple patches throughout the skin. So I didn't just use generic sort of peachy, creamy, beige colours for this portrait. I did add a lot of different blues, purples, reds, and oranges as well. So as you can see, the colours throughout each portrait vary quite a bit. There is no perfect shadow, mid-tone, or highlight colour that you're going to use over the entire piece. For example, your highlight areas are all going to be a slightly different colour to the other highlight areas on the same portrait. One of my favourite ways to find out what colour I actually need to use for different areas is doing these colour swatches. So I've just used an eyedropper tool on a photo editing program to pick out a colour and draw a line to a swatch on the side. This helps you be able to see exactly what colour is in which area of your reference photo. 
In this first layer, I'm not worried about adding any details, I'm just blocking in the main colours to give myself a base to work on top of. I'll then come through and blend this layer with a cotton tip. And this will help me blend and smooth the colours out a little bit, but it will also help me to push the pastel into the little grooves of the paper, which will also help with being able to add more layers on top. If you'd like to improve your drawing and painting skills even further, then my Patreon channel is the solution for you. From as little as $4 per month, you will have access to every tutorial that I've previously uploaded on your chosen tier level in a variety of mediums like pastel, coloured pencil, charcoal, watercolour and more. There are tutorials available for a range of subjects like wildlife, birds, landscapes, still life, flowers and portraits. If you would like to view the entire Patreon tutorial library before joining us, I'll also leave that link in the description for you as well. Not only are my tutorials full length, real time and fully narrated with clear instructions and explanations, but you will also have access to the original reference photo, a traceable outline and a list of suppliers including the exact colour names I'm using so you really can relax and follow along every step of the way. Every month I upload brand new tutorials to the Patreon library so you can grow and develop your drawing and painting skills and take your art to the next level. You can also join in on our members chat group where you can ask questions or advice or share your artwork and you can talk to other members in the Patreon community. And the best part is that there are no lock-in contracts, so you can upgrade or downgrade to a different tier level or you can cancel your pledge at any time if Patreon isn't right for you. So why not give it a go? The link is in the description if you want to check it out. You'll see a lot of videos on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram where artists seem to work in small sections at a time instead of building up the piece in layers. So they'll start on a section like the eye and then they'll complete that fully and then they'll move on to the next section. If I try to work in small sections like that, I forget which colours I've used, how much of that colour and in what order I use them in and it just ends up looking a little bit disjointed. I also find that I get my values wrong, which is not usually a problem because you can layer more colours to adjust the values as you go, but if you work in small sections, you have the potential to fill up the tooth of the paper without realising that you didn't go dark enough or light enough in a certain area. And then to fix that problem, it's quite hard to do because you can't add any more layers of pastel on top. All that being said, some people do prefer to work on small sections at a time because it's less overwhelming and easier to focus on one section. But for me, it doesn't really work well, which is why I like to work in layers and build up my drawing from there. Another thing that I like to do with my reference photos is bring up the saturation of the colours. This really helps to bring out some of those kind of hidden colours. And I like to use these mostly during my base layer, but I also do pull out some of these colours from the photo to use towards the end of the process as well. Some of these colours look really nice in the shadow areas or in the highlights rather than just going straight to black or white. I find a lot of skin tones look nice with more purples and blues rather than just using the standard sort of browns, creams, beige and greys. So the high saturation version of the reference photo really helps you be able to see where you can add some of those other colours. I tend to use more saturated and vibrant colours in the base layer and then I use more subtle colours with the pastel pencils on top and those bright colours in the base layer will still show through subtly but it makes a huge difference in the end result. Also a lot of people try to find the perfect colour that matches the reference photo but in reality it's unlikely that you're going to have the perfect colour in your set so you can layer different colours together to create the colour that you need. And like I said earlier, there's no perfect colour for any certain skin tone. You'll probably need to use multiple colours. For example, if you need a sort of purple toned shadow, you may need to add some browns, reds, blues and greys to create that colour. Before you get too far along in your drawing process, it's a good idea to check your values and proportions because they are the two most important factors when it comes to creating something realistic. In this example of a young girl, I took a photo of my drawing after a couple of layers 
and I turned the photo into black and white. I then put the reference photo next to it in black and white and compared the two side by side. This way I've taken out the colour aspect, which will help me just focus on the values or how dark or light each area is. It also helps you be able to see if your proportions are right when you put them side by side. You tend to notice those kinds of little things and then you can go back to your drawing and tweak those areas. You can actually do that comparison multiple times throughout the drawing process to check how you're going as well. Too many people focus on colour choices when it's actually the value of the colour that matters. For example, if I'm trying to match the colour blue at the top, I could pick any of these blues as long as it's not too dark or too light in comparison to the colour that I see on my reference photo. So yes, you do want to pick colours that you can see in your reference photo and your colour swatches, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And don't worry if the colour that you laid down looks a little bit lighter or darker to begin with, because as you layer you can alter those colours to darken or lighten them. I also usually do a black and white comparison towards the end of my project as well, just to see if I need to make any more adjustments before I call it finished. Something that I like to do at this point is actually crop small sections to compare. In this example, I've cropped areas like the eyes, nose or mouth and just compared a small part like that to the reference photo to check my values and proportions. Sometimes this can help make my mistakes look a little bit more obvious so that I can fix them. If you're new to portraits, something I sometimes suggest to my students is focusing on a small study, like an eye study. In this tutorial on the top left of the screen, I go through the common mistakes that people make when drawing human eyes and how to fix them. So click on that and I'll see you over there.